Hello, welcome to Coffee with Marcy. So happy you guys could join us. I'm here with Audrey Zona, integrative uh, health, health coach. coach. Hi. So, hello, hello. Mm -hmm. so, so nice to be here. I'm Thank you, Marcy, for having me on again. Super excited to have Thanks. you. Again, Audrey Zona, integrative health coach with mm -hmm. us. And she specializes in the psychology of eating. So she's going to explain to us a little bit what that means. Okay, so what that means is, well, first of all, I'll just say that my training was with the Institute for Psychology of Eating uh, run by Mark David, who mm -hmm. is a leader in the field of health, wellness, diet, mm -hmm. um, really mindful eating, I guess is how I would put it. And um, the psychology of eating really tackles you know, why is it that you run to the pantry at three mm -hmm. in the afternoon? Why is it that you binge eat possibly after dinner? Why is it that we use food, mm -hmm. possibly even alcohol or any kind of substance to yes. numb our feelings and to deal with our negative emotions that are arising in our Filling bodies? Filling void, right? Filling mm -hmm. that hole. Mm -hmm. So when I meet with my clients, I not only talk about, you know, what are you eating every single day and what's your rhythm of eating and timing of eating and are you eating a, a pl more of a plant-based diet and right. where's your healthy fat and where are your healthy carbs but at the end of the day what I really get into is why are you doing what you're doing especially mm -hmm. if you're stumbling I really try to help you to figure out right what's what's going on under the hood what's going on behind the scenes right oftentimes we are not aware or mm -hmm. mindful or mm -hmm. present that the fight we had with our husband at eight in the morning is what's driving us to the pantry and gobbling up a you know right. a row of cookies at four in the afternoon. Right. So we've got these emotions that are you know in us all, uh -huh. and many times we use food as the coping mechanism. So I really right. work with clients to figure out how are we coping, what are we doing, and let's find new tools. I'm going to give you a toolbox right. of all kinds of really awesome ideas. So that you don't have to use food as a coping mechanism. It should. Yeah, it's it's yeah. really interesting because I don't think people think of it that way so no. much. That I mean, it's been brought up that food yes. is a way to yes. you know to cope to with deal. things and all. But I don't think that really people look at the psychology behind Correct. what you're doing. Correct. Correct. Like if you have an addiction, you know, there's. Things there are places that you can go no. to that will help you. Correct, correct. Um, and you are using a substance to fill a void, yes. but I don't think people think of food yes. necessarily um, the same way. Yeah. But you definitely it, could oh, use it. You do, and right, more, whether I, it's shopping, I, food, there's wine, a myriad whatever, of different things exactly. that people use to cope. And exactly. I have to say that um, I have a lot of experience with mm -hmm. binge eating, a specifically sugar addiction. Yeah, I'm working with a few people right now mm -hmm. who are doing so so well. Mm -hmm. um, I give them certain supplementation to help with the sugar, mm -hmm. certain tricks and tools, mindfulness, right. meditation, a number of different things. And it's 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 really miraculous the, yeah. the changes and the shifts that they are making in their lives. And understanding why your body actually craves mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. Right. And sometimes you know, it's beyond just like willpower. Yes. And we do have certain bacterias that will reside in our gut. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure many of you have heard of candida. And mm -hmm. there's other different bacterias that will stimulate the, the I call them the bad guys in yeah. your gut flora. Yeah. So if you don't have a healthy gut mm -hmm. and you have what they call dysbiosis, where you have too many of the bad guys and not enough of the good bacteria. Right. They crave sugar. They live on sugar. Interesting. So the more sugar you eat, the more yes. they thrive and right. the more they want and the mm -hmm. more sugar you eat. So it's like this vicious cycle. How interesting is that? And that you like are feeding bacteria you, in your stomach you that are. your body is actually craving it for that reason. That is why mm -hmm. it is the little changes add up to huge lifestyle changes. Right. So the baby steps that you're taking by drinking more water, mm -hmm. drinking water like it's your job, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. having more greens every single day, mm -hmm. and having making sure you're having a big salad with your lunch and your dinner, mm -hmm. and doing Sunday meal prep, and roasting all your pans of vegetables, yes. and having your hard-boiled eggs done yes. in your fridge. Like, all of these prep things that right. I talk about, right. those little changes that you incorporate every week all of a sudden, you're going to turn around six months later, it's going to be habit. Right. It will be so habitual, you won't even realize that right. you made all of these lasting changes. So, and um, one of the other things that I know that's important to you, 
is um, being mindful of how you eat, when you eat. Yes, yes, um, yes. So why don't so, you tell us a little more about yeah, that? Yeah, so, um, you know, I always start with clients and mm -hmm. ask them to kind of take a deep breath before they start their meal mm -hmm. to settle down. I find that when you can kind of get in your body and you're embodied mm -hmm. and present, mm -hmm. you can be so much more mindful with the food choices that you're making. Yeah. You can allow, you can create space mm -hmm. for decision making. Mm. And oftentimes we are in such a rush. So just taking a pause. It's taking a pause, uh -huh. it's hitting that pause button. And that's why I really do encourage all my clients to be meditating, even mm. if it is just for 10 minutes a day. Yeah. What meditation does, I mean, it's proven mm -hmm. to change the gray matter of the brain. Meditation allows you to have space mm. to think clearly, mm. to have a neutral mind, okay. to hit the pause button before just reacting. Okay. And you might actually put something down on the dinner table and question, do I even like that? Right. Do I even want that? Or am I even hungry? Mm -hmm. We're so on autopilot, Marcy, right. that we don't take the time to nurture ourselves that right. way. Yeah. So I oftentimes will say to the client, before you start your meal, I know uh -huh. it's challenging, but close your eyes, take a couple of deep breaths, and kind of just get in your body. Mm -hmm. Am I hungry? What do I really want? Right. What am I going to have? What am I going to start with? And 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 tune in to the hunger signals. Right. Sometimes those hunger signals are really emotionally hungry. Mm -hmm. Your emotional hunger is really mm -hmm. what's growling mm -hmm. and not your stomach. Yeah. So mindfulness, awareness mm -hmm. is a huge piece of what I do with mm -hmm. my clientele mm -hmm. because when you become aware and mindful, that's when you can take the pause. You can question do I really want this? Right. Am I really still hungry? Am I really still hungry? That's you another know, thing. We don't, don't have to eat everything on our yeah, plate, put right? The, maybe, so, maybe put the fork down mm -hmm. in between those bites and yeah. reevaluate. Go right. inside for a moment. Yeah. So if you are interested in working with me one-on-one, -on -one, mm -hmm. feel free to reach out. I'm available all the time. Yeah. Um, you can reach out via face, uh, Facebook message or my website, which is livezoehealthy.com. Mm -hmm. So what are the things, One, because I know some of these ladies don't live in New Jersey. Okay. Could they do this yes. uh, via Zoom yes, or absolutely. Skype? Or... So I work via Zoom. Uh -huh. um, I have clients that I work with on okay. Zoom, so not a problem. So you don't have to be, look, at, we're like right here. Right. We're going to be talking to exactly. you. It's like you're in my living room right. and uh, happy to work phone conversations, or Zoom, whatever mm -hmm. works best for you. Yes. Absolutely. All right, guys. This yeah. is wonderful. So, Yay. and you you gave your website information. Yes. Again, yes. we'll put that yes. up. Yes. And I can't thank you okay. enough thank for you all for having this. me. It's been such and a pleasure. Yes. Always. And thank you all for joining okay. Coffee with Marcy. Okay. And just, you can Perfect. also go to my website, which is just Marcy Hopkins. So okay. www.marcyhopkins.com. <laughs> for upcoming shows. So thank you guys for joining us. We'll see you later. Yay. Keep it clean, ladies. <laughs> Bye. Bye. And I have a few questions for her. Okay. So the first question, what have you accepted within mm. your life, physically and or mentally? We'd love to know what you're still working on accepting. Okay. So I think that at this point in my life, I accept that I'm not physically perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, being an overweight child, I had a really rough time with my body image mm -hmm. and, you know, being overweight and dealing with being a little bit different and more self-conscious than the normal child. Right. So I think most of my life, I really had a tough time just with my appearance. Mm -hmm. But I've come to um, realize that looking perfect is just not that important. And I've learned to really love myself and recognize that feeling amazing mm -hmm inside and out and having a clear body mind and spirit is really what's most important to me and it's not the physical appearance right um i would say although i'm much more accepting of my body today loving myself and embracing where i am physically is something that i work on every single day yes for sure yes oh, wow. that's, good. that's great what have you learned to appreciate about yourself and or mm -hmm. within your life physically and mentally are there elements of who you are that you are still working on to appreciate? Okay. So 
I thought about this one long and hard. Yeah. And um, I would have to say that I appreciate that I've always had a burning desire for personal growth and development. Mm -hmm. uh, for years, I was like that girl who was always searching for the next thing, looking for more. I always had this passion mm -hmm. kind of burning in my belly, and I really didn't know what that was. Mm -hmm. Not sure where it would take me, but my strong desire to really help people and share mm. my knowledge for yes. health and nutrition and wellness and energy healing and all of those things <clears throat> really kind of kept me going. Mm. Um, I appreciate that part of myself. I'm glad that I was that girl always looking for that next thing to kind of yeah. fill me up because it's led me to where I am today. Exactly. I mean, it's made me who I am today. An, an incredible woman. Thank you. True. Thank you. Thank you. So what is one of your most rewarding achievements in life? Tell us what makes you most proud. Please share the goals and dreams that you still have. Okay. So, I mean, without a doubt, I have to say that my most rewarding achievements are my two kitties. Yes. I mean, raising two beautiful, kind, loving, mm -hmm. beautiful souls. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the best in, in life. Yeah. Um, aside from my two children, um... I'm really proud of the business that I've been building over the past couple of years mm -hmm. and the work I've put into my training mm -hmm. and the difference that I'm making in my clients' lives. Yeah. That just to me is the greatest gift of all. Mm -hmm. I, I love that I'm able to help them and guide them and support them mm -hmm. and that they're now living their most beautiful, fulfilled lives with the help and coaching that I'm offering them. Yeah. So that's really what I'm very, very proud of. And in terms of my... my um, dreams and goals mm -hmm. I'm really hoping to just build the business continue, continue the business to continue yes. to have one-on-one -on -one coaching continue to have group coaching mm -hmm. and continue my seminar business I love bringing um, information yes in in regards to health and wellness women's mm -hmm. health and wellness more specifically right. to the community which is how you are helping and a gift to us too. so it's been wonderful and I hope yeah. to just you know expand upon that of course so. of course keep doing what you're doing yeah thank you we all have imperfections, so we think. <laughs> the truth, we are all perfectly imperfect. What are your not-so-perfect ways? What imperfections and quirks create who you are, your identity? Well, I would have to say that my imperfection has always been really trying to control situations mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. circumstances. Mm -hmm. um, always working hard at really trying to make something happen. Mm -hmm. And what I've learned through the years is to really just hand it over to the universe. Yes. Really just trust uh -huh. that I will be taken care of, I will be protected, mm -hmm. and um, just kind of give up the control. Yeah. And I have to say, wow, what a big difference it is to live from that place of mm -hmm. surrender mm -hmm. and letting go and yes. just letting letting things just kind of organically happen for you. Mm -hmm. um, it's been such a gift to let go. Now mm -hmm. when something happens that I'm unhappy about, I just say, just let it be. What what will be, will be. And it right. always works out so right. well. And it's such a, a much better place to live. From, I know. We're really from, not in control of it, right? No. Like my mother <laughs> would always say, you make plans and God laughs. It's <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. So I always try to kind of remember that. Yeah. Um, oh, that's a good one. And life is just much like more enjoyable yeah. and stress-free when you mm -hmm. can just kind of roll with it. I agree. And not get all caught up in the control piece. Yeah, absolutely. So, and in we terms ladies kind of have that. And in terms of my quirkiness, um, I had a hard time with that. Mm -hmm. I um, I don't really know. I guess I guess my, I would have to say my nonstop smiling. Yeah. I, I'm a smiley person. Uh -huh. and. I, that's sort of where I go to when I'm maybe a little uncomfortable. 